it's my pleasure to join this uh, Canadian edition of Cardiology, Diabetes and Nephrology at the Limits. Uh, this is a virtual meeting and I hope the next time we meet, it will be in person. These are my competing interests. So I'm going to fast forward to the bottom line. Although we've made terrific advances in cardiovascular risk management, we've by no means reached the limits. The burden of residual risk is far too high. Of course, our uh, terra cognita, uh, our comfort zone is LDL, low density lipoprotein, protein, uh, which is a causal risk factor for atherosclerosis and satisfies uh, modified Cook's postulates with uh, association studies, human genetic studies, and intervention studies that show us that lowering LDL can improve cardiovascular outcomes. The, the palette of tools that we have for addressing high LDL has grown remarkably and very satisfyingly. They're not only the statins and azetamide, which uh, blocks cholesterol absorption from the intestine, but bempedoic acid that blocks cholesterol synthesis, a little bit proximal to the site of statin action, and the anti-PCSK9 agents, both the biologicals and the RNA therapeutics that are very exciting because they can be given just twice or once a year. Uh, so in the case of LDL, we are reaching the limits. We can drive LDL down uh, to very low levels and reap clinical benefit. But there's uh, much more to lipid risk than just LDL. Uh, there are triglyceride-rich lipoproteins or remnants, and we actually discarded them as a causal risk factor for years because we adjusted them for HDL, and of course, HDL and triglycerides vary inversely. And the current uh, failure of pharmacologic studies to raise HDL and the current human genetic landscape do not provide support for HDL's protective effect, as fervently as we believed it in the past, including myself. Um, but the human genetic evidence that has come out in the last few years strongly supports triglyceride-rich lipoproteins as causal. So I would have you uh, consider that we bet on the wrong side of this teeter-totter uh, between HDL and triglycerides and confuse the dependent and independent variable when we adjusted the cardiovascular risk of triglycerides for HDL. That opens the door towards treating hypertriglyceridemia uh, one way to do it is with fish oils, and this study with a highly purified uh, pharmaceutical quality control grade of uh, icosapentaethyl was able to decrease cardiovascular events. But there's more to the success of the REDUCE IT trial than triglycerides, as there was no heterogeneity in the cardiovascular benefit depending on baseline triglyceride levels and study which I'm involved with called a prominent is looking at a selective PPAR alpha modulator, pemifibrate, now directed towards a hypertriglyceridemic population, uh, which has not been done before in trials of agents of this ilk. And uh, we hope to be able to give you an answer about whether targeting uh, triglycerides and other aspects of risk with this uh, novel agent in a uh, hypertriglyceridemic population will yield cardiovascular benefits. Of course, there are very exciting novel targets, which have emerged actually from human genetics as well as observation, uh, that will allow us to expand our palette of anti-lipid measurements, measures, and that is uh, LP little a, uh, two RNA therapeutics that are in trials, and PLT3 and apoprotein C3, again, promising genetically based targets for which therapies are emerging. But beyond lipids, we have uh, inflammation. Uh, there's a very strong body of preclinical evidence that we need to translate to people. The first uh, shot on that goal was the CANTOS trial that targeted interleukin-1 beta. And in an on-treatment analysis, looking at those who actually responded to the drug shown in green, uh, we see an over 30% decrease in cardiovascular mortality, and all-cause mortality, the holy grail of clinical trials. Uh, we have other anti-inflammatory agents, such as colchicine, which have recently shown clinical benefit in the Colcott trial and those who are soon after myocardial infarction who showed a clinical benefit. This is a trial led in Canada by Jean-Claude Tardif and his Canadian team, and Lodoco-2 uh, that uh, studied individuals with sustained myocardial cardiovascular infarction, but we're in the stable phase, also showing a benefit. Uh, where are we going to go in the future? 
I think that a lot of arrows point at this pathway from the inflammasome, which generates active IL-1 beta, through to IL-6. And we're fortunate because we have novel agents that are able to address this pathway more distally, perhaps preventing uh, some of the infectious complications due to interruption of host defenses if you target more proximally. There's a large scale study, uh, which is uh, going to kick off based on a phase two trial, which uh, will be presented at the American College of Cardiology uh, using uh, ziltabecumab, a anti-IL-6 antibody. Uh, finally, there's a very exciting uh, new recognition of somatic mutation that occur in the bone marrow in stem cells that give rise to clones of leukocytes in peripheral blood that bear mutations in a small subset of known leukemia driver genes. And we've learned that the path to acute leukemia is paved with increased cardiovascular disease. Here we see the prevalence of clonal hematopoiesis increasing markedly with age. And if we look at people who have these clones, they have an almost twofold increase, fully adjusted, for traditional risk factors of cardiovascular events. And that's on par with uh, diabetes and even um, greater than with total cholesterol or systolic blood pressure. Uh, so finally, there's a big basket of uh, residual risk that we can uh, address uh, with uh, new agents that have been developed as anti-diabetic drugs, but that I would have you consider are cardiovascular drugs, and that is the GLP-1 receptor agonists and the SGLT-2 inhibitors about which you'll be hearing a lot in other talks in this meeting. So uh, we have to get these therapies adopted and we have to do so in an equitable manner. Those are remaining obstacles that are extra scientific. And let me close by thanking my funders and the team uh, that I've had the privilege of working with through many decades to uh, address these issues. Thank you very much. <music>